Huh. I, I, now it's recorded. Yeah, I had the setting for this stuff. I'm glad I saw that because I had the setting on this to automatically record unless somehow I turned it off, which hmm. I suppose is possible. But, um, um, you know, it seems like there was another parallel today is what I experienced. Could very well be. Yeah. And Carol's half and half, half in each of us, each of them. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Carol's, Carol's half, half in each of them. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Carol's in, in, in Carol in peril. Yeah, Rel. Parallel. <laughs> parallel. Parallel. Parallel and parallel. <laughs> Say that three times fast. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> well, I was afraid if there's a parallel shift today that explains something. I, I was looking in this, um, I was doing a lot of garden work all day uh for most of the day and uh i was looking in this grow bag which is about you know uh three feet wide uh yeah. round and it had uh some you know i had stuff in it uh, uh dirt and all that stuff and i walked out there this uh about 11 this morning and there were things growing, but I swear that they weren't growing yesterday. And uh, so I thought, well, okay, uh, I'll just take it. You know, it, it was, it, it, and, and I, I replanted the things and all that, but that was a weird one because I, I didn't think I had put anything in there and it just popped up. Um, yeah, it, uh, it was, it was a very interesting day today. Um, just a lot of interesting time shifts. I didn't notice anything major necessarily, but, um, it did feel slightly odd, like things, like it was a divergent. Mm -hmm. Oh, Patricia. Hi, Jan. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hi. I can't see myself. You can't see yourself? We can see you. No. Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's. <laughs> Yeah, so don't well, do anything you you wouldn't want to be in okay. <laughs> I'll try to behave. <laughs> it won't be easy. No, ever, well, uh, last week when we did the breakout rooms, yes, I couldn't see myself in the breakout room. That's right, I remember that. Yeah, and then when we joined back together, I still couldn't see myself, and it's the same now. It, hmm. Yeah. So I'll and, just. And Carol's been having trouble hearing. Um, speaking is not coming through. So. Oh. Could be something strange in the ether. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there always seems to be something strange yeah. in the ether, I think. All souls on the physical plane and utter bizarreness. I think that's <laughs> part of that's part of our uh, our ethos, you know is we get to sense it all, feel it all, and go, WTF? Um, <laughs> it's like, WTF again? <laughs> yes, WTF again, exactly. That's really more, more like it, I think. There's Miss Abigail. Oh, she looks like she's in a, in a, in a spot, not in her car today. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> WTF, WTF. We can't hear you, Abigail. Oh, can you hear me now? Now we can hear you now. Okay. Now, oh, Abby might be able to figure out why Carol has problems. Because she's a tech. You, yeah, you, you get landed, uh, Carol. <laughs> going Carol's on. not having trouble getting her, her audio to show. She um Everything looks like it's a go, but she d doesn't come across. There's no sound. Um, so if, uh, if she's on a computer, she if is. you go to the bottom where the, the microphone is, there should be like a little up arrow that says like audio options or something like that, or preferences, or if you go into the zoom preferences, um, right. menu, you can check the audio settings, audio preferences, and, um, you can select which microphone to use. Sometimes it changes automatically if like. A headphone is plugged in or if there's a different output it'll like change the the input for the microphone so if she switches through and like been there done all of that uh huh um 
the other thing I surprised, turning it off, turning it back again. Did that too. Um, you did that too. Yeah, you did that. Hey, well, we're gonna we may just have a we just may have a silent sage on this call tonight. Um, <laughs> so what what it is, we'll have to read Carol's lips. Um <laughs> And who knows if she gets frustrated enough, we may see a few WTFs. <laughs> Wait, Carol, you're not coming through. <clears throat> oh man. You can hear this though, correct, Carol? That's a nod. Okay, yes, we'll take that. Mm -hmm. All right. So hi Janaya and hi Beth or Tess, <laughs> whichever one you go by now. Um, and there's Alexandra. So Melanie and Alexandra are both honest tonight on with us tonight and there is terry benning and my god on my screen your your purple hair just <laughs> my lord it's it almost burgundy like, on mine it's is a bur uh, burgundy. it's like uh, the ombre effect on my screen oh dear <laughs> oh, it's neat. I like it. <laughs> well i'm using my work computer because my computer just has the worst video and no audio whatsoever so <laughs> it seems to be the theme tonight alexandra oh really and there's the spark yeah. and... i'm being a silent sage in case you haven't figured that out uh, oh you you tony being a quiet sage we know that would that won't last long <laughs> won't last uh, carol won't can't last. get her audio to function <laughs> and jan can't see herself okay yeah. all right well this ought to be interesting that uh well let's see so jan you can't see yourself no. and um at all <laughs> no <laughs> i did i changed my background did a background change or well you got one of your uh, marvelous I like that. We weaving one of the weave okay yeah I, yeah I thought i'd try anyway i still don't see myself Hey, Dan, oh, wow. take off your special background. Let's see what it looks like with well, well, I just put it on. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. She was just, I, I think Gene was saying if you took off your background, maybe that would jimmy the, you know, something in the program and you'd be able to see yourself. Who tweak. knows? Tweak. Tweak. Tweak Weak. as we speak. Okay. Right. So, hi, Don. Hi, Terry. And let's see, Jenna. Okay, well, it's five o'clock. And of course, I don't want you people to miss a single breath of my brilliance or be <laughs> or miss out on the baffling of my bullshit. One <laughs> of the two or all of the above. So what I thought we'd start off with tonight and have a little fun is y'all got your decks nearby? Yep. All right. So um, why don't you uh, go ahead and pick yourself a card? And uh, let's do a group share. We're all going to take a turn. And what we'll do, of course, it will just raise it up there. I got uh, six. I got sixty-six self karma in, in uh, attachment, the positive pole. And let's see. It looks like Karen got uh, uh, seventy-five old soul and uh, shadow pole of antiquated. Okay. And let's see, Patricia got uh, feminine energy, number 54, um, and the positive pole of receptivity, it looks like. Okay, and yeah. Jean got uh, emotional center and the shadow pole of sentimentality. And of course, Carol got the Dow card straight up. So Carol, <laughs> Carol gets to practice her presence. That'll be Excellent. great. Nice. I got the same card as last week, except it's now in the positive pole. So, oh uh, my goodness, yeah. look at you! Okay, it's something right. <laughs> and Melanie got pragmatist, and Janae, you you went uh, down, and then let's see. Okay, so you got Neptune in the shadow pole of fragile, and Dawn Donatius got uh, essence twin uh, in the shadow pole of um, mirror. And uh, Alexandra got uh, martyrdom in the shadow pole of victimization. Um, and then let's see, Abigail. Abigail got power. She got power in the positive pole Ooh. of authority. Yeah. Joe got uh, Joe got Saturn in formidable. All right. And uh, of course, pole of feminine. And Spiritual. Catherine pulls her own attitude. All right. <laughs> so way to go. 
positive and, pole of feminine. <laughs> I got the positive pole of feminine. Oh, so you I'm did happy too. Use, oh, okay. well, I, have so, to use, I have to use the online card. So I got gotcha. you. So did yeah. um, uh, where'd she go? Where did Patricia, oh, there's Patricia. I was gonna say so did Patricia. Okay, so anybody want uh, have a chance to chime in? Does your card uh, strike you interestingly or uh, appropriately? Yes, Alexander, first hand up. So it was on the bottom of my deck when I picked up my deck. Uh huh. And I look, I saw it and said to myself, oh, come on, please. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel today. But then I shuffled the cards carefully. I spread <laughs> them out. I pulled the card and it was the same freaking martyrdom victimization card because that's how I have felt all day. So yeah, the cards know. Thank you, thank you. That's that's I appreciate your time. And uh, uh, Karen, you're holding up your book. Was that is that also like holding your hand up? Oh no, I, I'm just trying to read it to see. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> antiquated, you know. Um. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm having you guys do this as a little way of, first of all, sharing with each other. Uh, anybody else have a reaction to your card tonight? Uh, whatever it is. Sure, I did. Go ahead, Terry. I, I, I was um, I was amazed to see it was the same card that I pulled last week, except that it was reversed last week in Ethereal, and it's it's in Radiant this week. So I'm I'm moving some energy around. I think. <laughs> so you're glowing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking it. Yeah, Excellent. cool, cool. Yeah. Good. Who's next? And Janae. Oh, has Janae, her... you got your hand up. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I'm look. I'm looking in um your book, the book, and the the shadow side of Neptune is fragile. Yes. You know, am I feeling fragile or undependable for a serious illuminations? Um, I'm feeling low energy, and the one that speaks to me from from your from your book is. Um, uh, um, it's easy to get caught in the allure of is it right, 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 of illusions. Mm. So it feels like, yeah, it's sort of a little bit of a sense of detachment and mm. low energy. That is kind of how I'm feeling right now. Just sort of little spacey here. Yeah. Okay. So maybe we'll get grounded in class. Good. We're going to see. Julia. I just lost my my app. So we're going to see if I get a different card than feminine. Oh, <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Tony. All right. Who else? Who else wants to comment? Jean. So I've been sharing with our, our twice weekly group that I've been feeling kind of out of sorts and not quite feeling good about right now. I mean, time wise. And I got sentimental, which is kind of like looking into the past and maybe looking at, you know, things were better then. And I think that's true. I'm kind of like, oh, things are horrible now. They were good back <laughs> somewhere uh, another time so um which isn't necessary it, it's not true it's just the way i'm feeling right now so this really mirrors how i'm feeling great thanks Jean. and that's an important distinction by the way uh, folks that we we're gonna i'm gonna be mentioning a couple of times tonight and through the rest of the course about you know dividing up your reaction from your emotional center your intellectual center your moving center and your instinctive center, being able to learn how to categorize those for yourself or listening to your clients, whoever you're doing a reading for, and help them begin to deconstruct what's going on for them. Because, you know, as, as uh, Gene said, an emotion is a lot different than a thought. Um, sometimes we can have a thought about something and it can be emotionally flat. Another times we can have a feeling state in our body and not have any, any thought in our head that we can identify, uh, but it might be associated with an emotion, et cetera, et cetera. And so being able to deconstruct these pieces is really useful in helping, again, a person or yourself, you know, get a better handle on what may be going on with, with the card you got. Who else would like to share? Thank you, Gene. Excuse me, um, Abby. Do you had your hand up, or did you? Maybe not. Okay. Um, uh, geez, so uh, let's see. Patricia, did you have your hand up earlier? Um, no, I didn't. But the, the first thing that just struck me about my card—it's the one that's uh, feminine uh, in the positive pole receptivity—is it's got my favorite flower in the world on it. It's got the calla lily. So I was uh -huh. excited to see that. Yes. 
And um, yeah, I'm just feeling good about this card. It's a good one because often I'm more on the masculine side showing up all the time. So to get the feminine card, kind of good. Yeah. All right. All right. Great. Uh, Tony. Well, interestingly, it sort of amped up the feminine energy and gave me um, artisan card in the positive pole creation creator. Cool. Cool. Good. Any, uh, so you like that one better than the feminine energy? Do no, you? no, but the, I lost uh, my, I lost the app uh, and I had to restart it. So I figured uh, I'd just ask again and it just sort of like, sort of, uh, but gotcha. yeah, um, feeling good and creative. I submitted my grant proposal. I wrote a sucky synopsis cause it was freaking hard, but it's done. And you know, I'm back to writing again instead of rehashing old words. Good. So, good. Um, Abigail, you are up I, next. <laughs> Thanks. I was raising my hand, but I couldn't find the mute button, so it was harder on the phone. I got power and authority in the positive pole, and uh, I related back to today. I kind of had to step into that power mode for a little while, um, helping my dad with some things. You know, the nurses, they're supposed to move him to a different room, and when I asked the nurses what time that was going to be, they were like, he's not moving today. What are you talking about? And I was like, no, we're definitely moving the room. And, you know, I had to like go speak to some of the uh, higher authority and stuff like that. And I was like, hey, listen, these are some things that I really need for my dad to help him, you know, along his journey and stuff. And uh, and so we finally like she was like, oh, yeah, you're moving today. We'll get you set up. And she moved them right away and we got it all squared up and uh and so it was because I was able to step into that power authority mode. That good, I was able to good. Get things done. <laughs> Getting things done. Good show. Welcome, Paige, by the way. I see you just kind of popping in there. And hi, Phil. Um, he popped in and popped out again. So I don't know what's uh, what's going on with Mr. Fauché. Uh, but uh, he'll, ah, there he is. Um, hey there. Hi. Uh, all right. So anyone else want to share about their cards or we'll move on? Okay, I'm not seeing anybody jump. By the way, Paige, uh, I, right. okay, Phil wants to, and Paige, the the uh, thing was, as I said, everybody choose a card out of your deck and just notice how you relate to it today. So did you, have, did you have a, a statement, Phil? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> so I got the perseverance card and the negative pole. <laughs> <laughs> a little monotony, eh? Yeah. So I'm, I'm experiencing just going through back pain, which is, you know, monotonous, but you have to persevere. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'll do something with you. I'll do something with you all now that uh, I mentioned just in passing. But if you ever see your card and it comes up in a certain direction, these cards, Michael, you know, the when they said, look at one of the things we want these people to know is that you can always spin it. So like, for instance, I have um, self-karma here and it came up for me in addiction. And I said, well, screw that. I'm not doing any of my addictions today. So I flipped it over um, and um, I put it into the attachment card. And you'll notice that it's a big magnet in there. but it, And it's a magnet inside of a symbol of a caution sign. Well, the idea being is be careful what you attract. Um mm. You know, and what you have, you know, in your orbit. Um, so in any case, um, I'm definitely having a, a fun time with this. And tonight I'm going to go through a lot more of the symbols that are on these cards and what they mean. But I just gave you a little bit of a of an advanced heads up on that. All right. Um, so I want to welcome you all tonight and um, uh, to another exciting episode of uh, <laughs> Michael on divination and the Mikey motivation cards. And hopefully um, you all got uh, the link to the uh, video, which I was able to finally upload to YouTube um, in case any of you wanted to sit for two freaking hours and review it. But uh, <laughs> you can always do that. All right. So what I'm going to do now, gang, is uh, I want to uh, go back and ask... Now, from either last week or you playing with the cards, uh, do any of you have any questions um, about your experience with these um, or comments about what you experience? I know I want to chat with Alexander and her, uh, and have her uh, share some of her experience, if she's willing to do that. 
um, about something that she played with this week. But uh, does anyone else have something they'd like to report? Yes, Jean. So um, one thing I, I shared again with our other group is that um, this, you know, I've been trying to pull a card a day just to kind of practice um, what is going on. And that's been really interesting. It's been a really interesting exercise um, to pull the card and then reflect on it and look at the description. And then just, I put it out on my table, you know, my desk for the rest of the day and just kind of sort of sit with it. So that's been an interesting exercise to do. All right, thanks, Jean. Uh, Alexander or Melanie, would, uh, do you, either of you uh, uh, want to share your, you don't have to, you can just not, you know, you know, shake your head no if you don't want to, but if you do, please do. I thought it was very interesting. Is it okay, Melanie? Okay. Um, so when we were at the gathering, we had a little session with um, Steve and the Michaels, and we wanted to know, we've always felt a really strong connection to each other from the first minute we met. <clears throat> and uh, we asked, you know, what was the connection? And apparently there was a connection in the 1600s. We were sailors. It was all a simple, great story. But um, I had, couldn't make the last session, so she and I sat and went through the slides and, you know, she talked about what she had heard and uh, we decided to do a relationship three card pull. She pulled her cards, I pulled my cards. My card for me really didn't describe me, but it really kind of described who I was supposed to be back in the 1600s and so did hers describe her. And then when I looked at her card, it didn't describe Melanie that I know, but it certainly sounded like the individual from the 1600s that she had been and vice versa. And then we looked at the relationship between us and it was so clear that whatever karma was between us, we were positively, were in a positive mode working towards resolving that karma. Ooh. It was very clear. I mean, there was just no question. From the start. Cool. Thanks. Go ahead, Melanie. Did you have something to add to that? No. Go ahead, Melanie. So just for the example, um, I was an asshole who left her um wounded uh after an amputated leg and I left and uh never came back. She died before I got back. And my card for me was narcissism the negative pole of self-love the card for her was naivete the negative pole of idealist the card for us together now was perceptive positive of the emotional so there you go cool. feeling each other out okay good well, i'm glad you guys the main thing about these cards is notice that the two of them were able to take meaning from them and that's the that's the part that we're going to talk about tonight. Lots of angles of how we start looking at the, these cards. Okay, all right, gang. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen, and uh, we're going to start doing some slides. Ta-da! All right. So let me do this. Let's see if I can hide the control bar. Maybe Control Shift Alt H. Yay! I did it. Okay. Um, do any of you see any kind of like a black um, uh, a shadow or line across the top of the screen? Or can you see my um, slide all the way? I see class two, part one of set screwed symbols and layouts. Is good. The Very good. That's exactly thing. what I'm hoping for. Okay, great. All right. So uh, notice I'm throwing some new information at, or, uh, that I just barely mentioned last time that we're going to go in a little more tonight sets groups remember i said the divination is about symbolism all right and symbolism of course is a bit different um when we're using something physical like um you know in this case a cards uh, because i said divinational systems usually use some kind of neutral or medium tool um that is you know a physically in and of itself doesn't necessarily have any uh, energy on it, but it attracts energy and reflects our energy as we work with it. Now, if you can read this, all right, um, what I've said here is um, it, it means that when you are pulling uh, the cards, 
you are literally uh, create, and, and if you're doing this with another person, remember most of my lecture is not just about you doing it for yourself, but it's about potentially doing it with others, is you guys are creating a symbiosis, you know, a combined state of energy like uh, Melanie and Alexandra did. Now, let me contrast that with channeling and why I do so. You know, obviously you're all here because you know me as a Michael channel, the Michael teaching is a channeled um, uh, circumstance, which we'll see, uh, I mean, that is to say system, uh, in a little bit, but remember, it comes through an individual medium, a person. So there was always some part, um, as uh, our friend Nan Patrick is fond of saying, there's always some part of Steve involved in Steve's channeling and uh, uh, and Phil in his channeling and Troy in his channeling and Shepard in his channeling, et cetera. And I believe that's true because we create this mind, but we're doing some interpretation on when you do are asking us a question. So you are literally connecting with Michael's energy through the cards directly, and you facilitating the other person are helping that as well. Now, I wanna make a, a, you know, a, a definition for you guys that some of you know about, some of you may have never thought about this, but that um, you know, the concept of metaphysics, um, the word meta means the unseen or behind, beneath, beyond or underlying, you know, it's the invisible. Um, um, so when it's talking about physics, it's talking about what's behind or underneath, you know, our physical reality. Well, so much of what we talk about in metaphysics can't be spoken to directly other than metaphorically. We're always using some kind of system. Even soul aging is a good example of a metaphor, isn't it? Um, and the ver the verbiage of that, you know, infant, uh, baby, young, mature, and old, or as the cards are, you know, I use trying to make the, the verbiage more familiar to people, uh, infant, childhood, adolescence, um, maturity, and elder. So, um, so, so much of, you know, this philosophy and uh, metaphysical viewpoint we are using analogy metaphors and uh, that sort of comparison to to try and project something materially onto something that we otherwise can't see. So what I'm suggesting to you is it's really okay to speak to your metaphors when you're doing a session. If they come up for you when they have done, when they when you have looked at a card, honor that validate that because for some reason um, michael and the gang um, we got to put her on youtube sometime there's two people um maybe we can uh, get somebody to mute themselves um so we all right <laughs> all right thank you gang um all right so Does everyone mute themselves unless you're talking yeah just go ahead and do that i'd appreciate it okay so this, some of you saw this slide already, some of you may not remember it, but I wanted to come back to it again as I start leading into the cards and their groupings. Okay, first of all, you remember I broke down the Michael teachings into four major quadrants. I called it the cosmology. And then over here on the lower left, you see, I say it's talking about the Tao and the other planes of existence. And for our purposes, the Tao set are two cards, which are zero, the Tao card itself, and number 77, the other end of the deck, which is the Nexus card. Um, section B represents soul age evolution. And, and I said that soul age evolution, you know, can be talking about social consciousness. Um, uh, it can be us growing up as literally part of a cycle. So if you were doing a reading on a child, or um, for that matter, even a, a stage in a, uh, 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 in a project, for instance, soul ages. So spiritual evolution or of soul or society or any kind of cycle um, is shown in card 70 through 76. And again, we'll come back to most of these and we'll see them in different ways. Now, most of you, if, if not, of course, all of you have your overleaves. And you also know that the main part that most of us got turned on to and are here about is part C, and that's about the physical plane, which is about the personality trait system. 
It's another way we have of saying in this teaching, it's a, we're talking about essence manifesting through our personality. And our personality, of course, is in our physical body. So the majority of the cards of this deck are one through 52, which represent things that happen in material reality and or to our personality somehow infused or imbued, you know, through uh, essence into our lives and of course what we know about the michael teaching but also what we know about every metaphysical belief system is all of them are really trying to make some commentary about um what our life here is about um if it's an astrological chart we know we see the cycles and the um uh, transits and progressions and so forth using that well these cards have that um uh, construct built into the spiritual evolution um, cards. The last one, uh, section D, what I call the uh, transcendental abstractions. Um, you know, most of us know the term karma. Most of us know the concepts of masculine, feminine energy. Most of us know the concept of soul, um, any number of things. We know that the Maya, uh, Michael borrowed the concept of illusion, Maya, um, from uh, Hinduism. And um, so cards 53 through 69 are those concepts that, again, don't have any physical matter, but we read into their presence vis-a-vis -vis our lives. And, and that helps us make sense of things. So when I broke down these cards, you can see I put these four parts of the Michael teaching in um, you know, the, the, the entirety of the layouts. Now, uh, we have a question. I don't know if this yes, is. Yes, go ahead. What's uh, go ahead and uh, I, Alexandra. I. All right, go ahead, Alexandra. Um, I was wondering about the one through 52. All right, let me go back. No, right. no, I mean, just in general, because it relates to a regular deck of cards, it relates to the major arcana, it's all the same number. What's the story? It is, isn't it? Uh, yeah. thank you, Alexandra, for sharing your observation. So, everyone. I'm, I, you're about two slides ahead of me, but that's awesome. Sorry. Sorry. No, 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 no. I'm glad you saw it because if you saw it, that means other people are seeing it and I'm delighted. So let me just say, to speak to that, folks, many of you know that, um, as you can see, if there's a zero card and a 77 card, that's a total of 78 cards. That, by the way, is the same number as a standard tarot deck. Okay? So I did borrow that. The one through 52 is the sta same standard number as a regular playing card deck. That's also true. For some of you, you may know that, in fact, historically, the, um, uh, the tarot deck actually evolved from tr the traditional playing cards. And then other um, archetypal symbols were added into. So... The, I felt like that number of 52 included, all, well, what we'll see in a minute will include all the body types and all the overleaves. But great observation, Alexander. Good show. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to skip over this for a minute. And I'm going to get, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get back to this. And then we can come do that live rather than on a slide. So remember what I suggested that the purpose of, you know, of the cards or three purposes of the cards are they help you detect what energy is present. That is to say, they can alert you to things that are already there. You didn't create those things necessarily. You're just getting some language to, you know, say, oh, this is what the cards vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, uh, through Michael and my essence are getting. Then it's, you know, it describes Many of the cards are literally for, you know, content purposes. Some of you have been reading, um, you know, my little pocket guide here. And you'll notice that almost on every individual card, there are anywhere from three to five um, uh, responses per, um, per polarity, whether it's the illuminated or positive pole or the... Um, uh, shadow or negative pole. Uh, but in any case, all of those descriptors are meant for terminology to help you have a narrative to maybe see what rings, like Jenea did tonight 
when she said, ah, this one popped out at me and it made sense to me. I will tell you that when I do finish the updates to the um, ebook, you will notice that there is far more uh, than the you know three to five on any given descriptor. Sometimes there is as many as 15, um, but I have other things I wanna add into it before I reissue it. All right, and the last part of that is it directs. And in directing you, you know, it is literally su suggesting to you that you can take some of this input and you can come up with a strategy or some behaviors to implement to actually do out there in the world. Um, now, another way to see the booklet or to talk about the booklet, um, and I do, is to think about it like this, you know, divination is offering you possible outcomes. All right. That's one of the feedbacks that the cards or more specifically the answers in the book can their description can be is about that. It also can be a clue about what you're learning or how to learn something. Um, so we, you, and these are lenses I'm inviting you to, you know, put on and off and say, oh, yeah, this is this seems like this is more of a, you know, an, an attention getter to get me to learn something or in this particular case. It may be giving you a particular con context of what's happening in a circumstance. Again, more of an elaboration, perhaps of the what and how, but what's going on right in the moment. Um, now, another thing, especially, this is especially true, folks, I think, when you see the attitude cards, the seven attitude cards. And we will uh, see some of those um, tonight. But again, I will be coming back to them every class, reinforcing them. Um, but the attitude cards may be a point of view that you're being suggested to adopt for a particular circumstance. Um, and then again, as I've mentioned, um, sometimes a card's description is really clear. It is literally a call to action. It's telling you, get up and do something. Okay. So, you know, I've been talking about, again, uh, comparing systems. And I've been talking about the fact that what makes... Uh, any of these systems, including the Michael motivation cards, you know, a bit different from using the Michael teachings as it stands, is that I have ins inserted a whole bunch of symbolism in it. Okay. Um, but I want you to understand what, what, again, I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're talking about the mind and the intellect in general, um, I'm, I should have put maybe the Michael cards at the end. By the way, folks, I want you to understand, I apologize if um, I'm not seeing your hands raised. The reason for that is for me to be able to um, operate the screen clearly, I have to minimize the um, uh, the Windows box there. Don't so, worry, Steve, I'm keeping an eye out. Unless thank I'm you, Gene. I'll, I'll, I will we'll depend on Gene to call out to me and uh, let me know if there's a question. So, of course, we all know that uh, pretty much every system... Uh, out there, metaphysical system talks about the mind or the intellect, the emotions, um, which, by the way, I don't usually call feelings. Feelings I often call uh, uh, use for the body and sensations. OK, um, and then, of course, there's the soul or the or spirit um, if, beyond just the single soul. Now, as you can see, I did adopt the four major playing card images. Uh, I use diamonds um, to indicate the, you know, more intellectual center, also known as the, uh, uh, you'll see in a moment, um, uh, how it reflects to the axis. Hearts, of course, are for emotions. Uh, clubs uh, for the physical body, and then spades um, for soul spirit. Now, if we move across this uh, grid, we'll also see that traditionally speaking, if this were traditional tarot, especially for those of you who are really familiar with tarot, you can begin to take your knowledge of those systems and feel free to bring it here. Because remember, Michael is not going to waste any of you. All of your knowledge is going to be utilized here. Everything is welcome here. And if you see, remember what I said, one of those analogies, one of those comparisons, one of those metaphors that carry over from a different system, by all means, introduce it to the person. Because if it came to mind, it's probably legitimate and valid and may be useful. At least it may be useful to you. So swords is intellect, cups is emotion, Pen, uh, pentacles 
um, also called pentangles, also called coins, depending upon the system, um, talks about the body or the material plane, by the way. So when I talk about physical, I'm not talking about just individual physical uh, persons, uh, 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 meat suits. <laughs> I'm talking about the material plane, uh, you know, of physical things. And then lastly, rods or wands, wands, you know, indicating that sense of, you know, magic and magic and able to move it around. Now, in astrology, we would consider mind, air, um, uh, water, emotion, earth, um, you know, body, physical, and then fire, soul, spirit. And then again, I repeat the diamonds, hearts, clubs, and spades. So now when I come over and I talk to you about the symbolism, something that you're going to be able to notice, and I'm calling out to you, when you're doing a reading for something, one of the layers of information that you might be able to glean glean off of a reading is when you notice that there are a number of one particular column suits, if you will, more represented than another. Especially if we're talking about some of the larger layouts that I'm going to show you tonight. Okay. Um, so if you notice, and when you're glancing at the cards, you see that it might be saying, oh, there's something very expressive about this particular re reading, or there's something very inspirational about it, etc. Very heart oriented, very head oriented, etc. So you can keep that and we'll let that just filter into your toolkit. Okay. So more of the more of the issues about the symbols and um, the overleaves group. Um, many of you who have um, seen, uh, you know, oops, excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, there we go. Um, who have seen uh, uh, J.P. Van Hool's and um, Jose Stevens' book, the um, the personality profile book? They use um, the white mask um, as the uh, image on the screen, uh, on the cover rather, and I thought that was a, a really good representation. Because I, I want to, I want to in, in really instill in all of you. Remember, folks, even roles, even though they are the first embeddedness over our essence, they are still an embed over our essence. We are more than our roles. So, in a way, even though that's a mask that we really identify with, it is still that first layer mask. They are cards one through seven. And for those of you who know this teaching really well, you know that um, uh, card one is the server, and at the other end, card seven is the king. And in between there, card two is the artisan, three, the warrior, four, the scholar, five, the sage, six, the priest, and seven, the king. And this, <clears throat> these seven cards are, here's another term borrowed from Tarisha traditional tarot they represent the major arcana okay because they are the main archetypes now using the cards let me sound out these two bullets for you there is um a roles spread that you can ask questions of that really highlights the energy of a particular role uh, and how they might approach a circumstance and then there is the subpersonality or the inner sub layout. And what that does is that says, and for those of you who are at the East Coast gathering, that's what we did. I've renamed it for this uh, for this class, and this is what it will stay. Uh, the inner sub personality says, how do what is that role uh, of you know whatever other role is uh, of the seven that is not one of yours? either your own role or your essence twin role or your casting role, how does one of those show up in me? And it's a spread that actually helps give you some feedback on that. And that image, of course, is the, um, the mask. Now, goals, goals, I just went, uh, you know, and by the way, for those of you who happen to be following along, if you can see my little screen, I am showing you again the colored, um, uh, threefold uh, handout that is the um, uh, colored overleaf chart. And you'll see that goal is the second row and um, it spans across. And so the goals, what they do in the in this deck is they whenever you see one, 
it's saying here is a direction for you. Here is a hope for outcome that you're probably looking for. Um, here is a target that you may be crafting your, um, you know, your own sites on. So when you see goals in a layout, understand that it's not saying, oh, this is, you know, discrimination is your goal when you, in fact, know that your goal might be growth or flow or something like that. No, it's saying in this circumstance, the direction or the or the means that you want to implement or look the lens you want to look through through is that particular goal. OK, now the attitude. Remember just a and and it's um, by the way uh, the go, the um, goal numbers are eight through fourteen and they're all part of this fifty two and you're noticing that each time I introduce you to a role the cards continue to add you know by number so the attitude is, the symbol there is actually a, a kind of an obscure one I will I will acknowledge it is an attitude um, uh, meter that appears in a plane so when a plane banks. The attitude meter, you know, shows what tilt or what perspective uh, the plane is uh, banking at, you know, and you're looking at a horizon at some angle. OK, so when it's offering you, say, more than two attitudes um, uh, in a reading, realizing what it's saying is there are contrary or, or not necessarily contrary, excuse me, contrasting points of view that are being represented in for some reason in this reading. And notice where they happen to be in your layout. Now, you that's why, as you've seen me write in certain um, um, uh, uh, of my slides here tonight, talking to you about focusing your questions, because um, we haven't really worked on that part yet, and we will more so. You will notice that focusing your question and getting it clear in your mind will then inform probably the way you choose a layout. And then from there, the card arrangement, the layout will form your narrative. All right. Now, many of you recognize the chief features image, which is the dragon. And of course, I borrow that um, with homage to Jose Stevens uh, and his book, uh, the uh, uh uh, what is it? Taming is it taming your dragons? Um, you know about chief features. Um, so my apologies that I, it just slipped my mind. But in any case, you know, an excellent book all about chief features. And one of the things that I want to just say about chief features is, I, I the way that I use them in the implied Michael approach is that they are they are potentially uh, certainly an ego hindrance, um, or they are a strategy to try and mitigate some fear or pain. OK, they are not bad, evil or wrong, because the last thing we need to do, folks, is turn one part of ourself against another part of ourself. Instead, look at it from the standpoint is it is representing some kind of perhaps a warning or a reactive state and find out what that is. Alexandra tonight told us about her martyrdom in the negative pole. She described it beautifully the way that I would hope a person uses it. It described a situation that she recognized was happening for herself. She wasn't condemning herself. She wasn't condemning martyrdom. She saw it as a phrase you'll often hear me use, folks, is she got gotten on her card. In other words, it said something that was meaningful to her. And I hope you can see chief feature cards like that. So I, I don't mean to skip the modes. I'll go back to that. Now, you notice uh, I did the modes as a little car, you know, a little Volkswagen, um, you know, and I love the image when I saw it. And I just thought Volkswagen, you know, of course, that means, you know, people mover. And, um, you know, that's what modes are, is how we move in the world. OK, how we take action, our style of behavior, um, whether it's as fast and potentially reactive as passion mode. Um, or as, um, uh, you know, uh, mediated as reservation mode or possibly as, um, as pensive um, um, or as caution mode. Um, however that style of mode is, you know, they inform us about a way to approach something. And I will say something about observation mode. Of course, I haven't mentioned the assimilative axis, but we're going to talk about that again some tonight and more in uh, nights to come. Whenever assimilative cards come up, feel free 
if you need the clarification and they're not quite clear in themselves, feel free to get your cards out and just grab another card, you know, for clarification. What did I just put it? So, okay. So I got a body type card and body types are very often about action in and of themselves. So that would be the clarifier. If it's a, if it was a, you know, an assimilative mode and it threw in a body type, especially in the positive pole, it's probably saying get going. Okay. Centers. Many of you know uh, the way that Michael uses the seven centers is um, is similar to, though not exactly identical with, um, the concept of chakras um, in you know traditional, um, say you know Hindu or Buddhist or other you know uh, metaphysical teachings, but they're close. Um, instead, what we think of them as are the way that we you know um, our first predilection of how to receive information. And of course, we know that the <clears throat> the three centers of um, intellectual, emotional, and moving are the three primaries that we all choose from first. One of those in some order. And then we have a, a part, and then we have what's often called the, the tertiary, or if we get stuck in the part, we call the third one the trap. And then, and, and so you see that little body, that person with these concentric rings emanating out from them. So that symbol is an indication that you're always putting off some kind of energy. If you're centered in your center, okay, if it's indicating, if it's coming up in the positive pole, that means it's probably telling you something that's in alignment um, with the reality of the circumstances that you're searching out. And if it's in, but if you're in the negative pole, that symbol would indicate that somehow, some way you are in a warp. That is to say, you are out of alignment somehow. And for those of you who know about chakras and auras, please bring your knowledge to the reading. You can very possibly be, you know, you ask somebody saying, you know, if you saw, say, the emotional center, like Jean had pointed out tonight, and she had, uh, brought it up in the shadow or the contrary pole. Um, I also called, by the way, the negative poles, the shadow or the contrary pole. I gave them those extra names because I want to continue to try and break this binary association of the of the bad good concept of positive and negative um and what she did tonight is you know she knew that in her emotional center she was out of alignment she was finding herself out of the present and in the past so that's the kind of thing that you might bring to a reading and offer to somebody when you're working with them okay last one the body types now the body types I love, I really do. Um, and I love them in this deck in a lot of ways because in a lot of ways I differ from many channels in this teaching. Um, and I'll explain what I mean. A number of channels in this teaching tend to minimize um, the effect of, or the importance of body type. At least that's my reading of a number of them. I, on the other hand, folks, tell you, what, are you kidding? The body type is, and, and or the combination of body types, in, in genetics, they would call it your personal phenotype, is literally your most tangible container and expression of what's housing your overleaves, okay? So if you are getting a health-related question, or if you're asking health-related questions, and you get body type cards, folks, Take them really and scrutinize them because what they're saying is something pertaining to your physical appearance or if you're, it may be your, and by the way, I don't call a person's skin color their race. I call it their variety because frankly, we are more like varietals of roses and or breeds of dogs or cats than we actually are races of beings. Why? because every human animal can breed with every other human animal. And so we're one race. But we all know that in, the, that in many cultures across this planet, the color of a person's skin will have a really, really pronounced effect on how they are perceived, um, you know, how they are treated in the world and so forth. Then we have other issues. Um, you know, folks with uh, lunar body types, 
um, um, are often um, uh, very prone to various kinds of sen sensitivities. So, um, you know, that w one, for instance, same thing with solar, they can be very prone to, uh, as well as the um, uh, 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 Neptune card, um, which is what's called an exotic body type, which is why you see, you know, 43 through 52, of course, that's 10 numbers there. Uh, because there are three exotic body types that are seldom talked about, but I bring them in because I think they're important. So again, um, your body type or the body type cards in a, in a metaphorical sense then will be commenting upon the, the, the shape or the physical appearance of a situation. If you were to draw the Saturn card formidable, for instance, like, you know, I just pulled uh, a moment ago and showed you guys like Joe did tonight. That would be an indication that there is something going on that's really tough uh, or strong or virile or intense. Same thing if you saw, say, the Jupiter card or the Mars card. Um, you know, if you get the Mars card straight up in any of your readings, you're in for some really endurance and some strength. So these are some of the things that I'm helping you to understand interpretationally that when you see any of these particular groups, you know, you can um, can come to mind. Now, here's an example of a group laid out. Um, this happens to be, some of you will recognize it already, of course. This is the group known as the Attitudes, right? So, and, and the way I start them, you'll notice, is I start with the expressive axis first. So 15 and 16 are the diamonds. They're in the lower right-hand corner, Okay. Um, because they're under the expressive axis. And then, unlike other people in this teaching, um, I got um, uh, permission and, um, and, and, and instruction to say that expression is first, but action is really second because action is what causes transformation. Inspiration actually is the emotion that happens after you experience your action. So you'll notice... Uh, uh, number 17 is cynic, um, which is the warrior um, uh, 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 attitude, excuse me. Uh, then uh, the realist, which is the king attitude. Then you see the stoic, which is the server attitude. Then uh, the spiritualist, which is the priest attitude. And then finally, the pragmatist, which is the um, assimilative axis, which is the scholar, um, uh, the scholar attitude. So I'm going to stop for a moment, and I am going to look at my screen. So I'm going to bring you all back on, and I am going to give you all a chance. Does anyone have a question about um, some of the groups and symbols that I'm presenting to you so far? And be sure to use the reactions on your um, on your lower bar. If you can, yes. That would help Gene and I both, if you will. Okay, so Janiyah, how are you? Yeah. Sweetie, it's not about the, the meaning and the content, but actually a practical question, a side question. Is sure. it possible to get the slides just so we can review the content without listening to the whole thing? Oh, sure. Didn't you? Did, I sent those out the next day. Didn't you get okay. them? I, I will double check. I was I was off dealing with the retreat, so I didn't pay attention. But thank you. That's Certainly. what I need to know. I, I have been I have been sending out the slides um, uh, every every week. So, yeah, so you. you don't have to listen. And I've been sending out a link to the audio only because I know many of you prefer to just listen to audio in the background. And, of course, uh, the, really only about an hour of the audio is me going through these or even if that much. A lot of times it's such a thing, et cetera. OK, very good. Any other questions? I'm going to assume not unless I see a hand. OK, all right. All right. So we're, we're back, folks. All right, so the next slide here I wanted to show you is, now look at, remember, um, again, if you want to pick up your uh, threefold brochure, I'm, I'm showing you essentially the first column, the artisan column, but just fanned. So this is, these are all artisan-esque cards. And even though we haven't gotten to it yet, You'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, the artisan symbol is represented on each of the card. And for the artisan symbol, 
um, I use the paint brush and the um, artist's thumb palette. So when I was mentioning earlier, if you're doing a reading and you happen to say, whoa, okay, look at this. Isn't this interesting? I see a whole bunch of artisan cards in this particular reading. What might you imply from that? Because remember, even though the artisan is the main archetype in this group, all of these secondary or subordinate overleaves are still have a flavor of artisan-esque imbued in them. All right, so keep it on here. All right, so I've mentioned groups, I've mentioned sets. Now I wanna mention what I call clusters. Um, and clusters are very interesting to think about when you get them as well. Um, many of you see here what um, the Exalted and the Ordinal cards, 59 and 60. These are, by the way, I should have uh, put it up here on the, on the title, but these are also part of the Transcendental Augments um, group. And the reason for it is because even though we, ha uh, we have you know, large and small, this notion of cardinal and ordinal, cardinal, by the way, is what uh, Shepard in the original Michael Channels termed exalted, and then uh, JP and many of us uh, adopted the term exalted instead, um, you know, is more of a conceptual idea. But it's a conceptual idea that implies, you know, an expanse, as is the positive pole of exalted, as to something that's much more, um, you know, individual, but individually that looks comparatively the same. Some of you can look down at the negative pole, um, uh, the photograph of the negative pole of ordinal, and you see seven peas in a pod. Or is that eight peas in a pod? So yeah, I guess it's eight peas in a pod. So it's full octave. <laughs> so when I chose my images, you know, I chose them to represent the qualities in how these things can look. And you notice over on the... Um, uh, on the side, they also share the same border color. In the upper right-hand corner, um, they also are, if you will, Dow cards, because they represent these qualities, these transcendental qualities, you know, that the Dow has installed into the physical plane and so forth. Now, over on my right column, you see that the symbol of the uh, pharaoh is the symbol that you will find on all exalted cards. So um, all the exalted roles of priest, sage, and king, for instance, uh, all have a pharaoh on them, indicating that they're an exalted card. Same thing is true, um, but right below it, with the Lincoln Head Penny. Um, uh, I chose the Lincoln Head Penny because there are literally hundreds of billions of them in circulation, and um, they are, they look almost identical with the exception of a few, you know, differences, sp specifically the date and or what's stamped on the back. And ordinality would indicate, you know, a kind of a similarity, but a real personal quality that is, you know, um, that is not big picture oriented like exalted energy is. And then, of course, you see the uh, yin and yang symbol there, or the yang, excuse me, yang on top, masculine energy, and then the yin symbol, because um, in the Michael teachings, uh, we have uh, not noticed that, um, you know, uh, ordinals tend to be more masculine in their, in their showing up and ex exalted in their, um, you know, in their expansiveness and that uh, feminine energy. Now, here's some more, a couple more augment groups. And... Uh, then we'll um, jump into a few layouts. Um, you notice I use frequency. Uh, the concept of frequency is about our pacing, okay? So whenever you see the frequency card, particularly if it comes up in the negative pole of dissonance, what it's suggesting there is that you are probably going either way too fast or way too slow for your own frequency, your own pacing. Now, you notice in the positive pole, it shows a metronome. And, and the positive to a term is attuned. That would indicate that not only you as an individual, but anything about this particular reading is in alignment, meaning it's on a proper kind of pace or course and what have you. It's not dissonant in any way. Then, of course, here, um, 
uh, we have the masculine and uh, uh, the feminine and masculine card. And I put those in the wrong order, 55 and 56. Um, um, and you'll, uh, again, you notice, and one of the things I will tell you too is, um, though I haven't mentioned it as yet, one of the subtle uh, cues that some of you might notice when you're looking at it is if you look at the background image, of the card itself. The background image of both masculine and feminine is are meant to be extremely suggestive. The masculine card is literally, a, you know, a granite outcropping um, in the middle of um, uh, uh, the, uh, you know, Mojave Desert. The feminine card is literally these um, underwater fluid flowery kind of wavy looking almost like feathers um to you know uh, you know epitomize that so there are a, a, there, the backgrounds will even give you hints as well all right then these next three you know so by the way masculine and feminine represent another one of those clusters as does you notice these are all brown rimmed because these are very much about our human experience personality card literally says if it's something about self that's coming up you know it's really important whether it's self or ego um and if it's even if it's coming up in the ego some of you i wish i could flip the card but i uh, again we'll, we'll revisit this throughout the course is you'll see that it's a broken face looking back at itself because what all all ego tends to do is be monitoring itself instead of in its true personality now, the way that personality connects to soul spirit, number 58, is through self-love. And this is a term that I invented or channeled, either one or both, um, amor primera. Now, some of you may have the older version of the deck and you see amor propre. Um, that is a term that came from Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And um, I did not, that, and it indicated some like of a balance of you know the proper qualities of self-love, self-respect, self-esteem, self-care, and I really thought that was a little too too mechanical, so I changed it to amor primera because it means first love, love first, or primary love, love pr love primarily, and that's the whole message behind that card in the positive pole is come from love primarily whenever you can. And when you see it in the narcissist, uh, know that there's a fragmentation going on. And you may be experiencing, many of you know the myth of narcissus, you know, maybe stuck in, you know, an ego state of some kind of self-obsession or self-indulgence. All right, hey, so, Steve, yes. real quick, a couple of us have noticed that in our decks, Yes. seems like feminine is 54 versus 56. Um, uh huh. Um, and, actually, the chart, you know and the chart says so too. You know what? Th th thank you. Actually, that is an that is an, a card from an older rendition. Thank you. Okay. The one I had on my slide. Yours is right. It should be fifty. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Because it should follow. Thank you. I will. I'm going to change that slide. It should follow frequency. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Thank you for for uh, having me pause to clarify that. Yeah, Karen caught it. Thank you, Karen. That's great. Okay, so gang, um, um, so you notice all of these are rimmed in gray, and I call this the covenant set. Does anyone have a guess, want to speculate why I would call these the covenant set and or why I might use gray to rim these cards? And I'll give you a hint, shades of gray. Anyone want to take a stab at it interpretationally? Well, not the color, but All the right. concept of each of the cards, their covenants because they follow you through lifetimes. Excellent. Excellent. And Abby, I see you um, raising your hand. Go ahead. I was going to say because the interpretation is kind of like a gray line, you know, it's kind of like blurred good and bad. It's, it's all about interpretation of, of the cards. Excellent. So you're referring to the color uh, scheme that, I mean, the color uh, uh, of the, uh, of the border that I chose. Yes, that's correct. That's exactly it. 
So let me expound on that just a moment. And, and, Catherine and, oh, Catherine's got a comment. Go ahead, Catherine. I was just going to also say the color, nothing is black and white. Everything's gray. There's no such thing as absolutes in karma or maya or life task or anything. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I will give you guys a little heads up. One of the most powerful backgrounds that I used in this whole deck, as far as I'm concerned, is the um, background for the karma card. And uh, what that is, is that that is the Vietnam Memorial um, in Washington, D.C. I, I took a photograph of that um, because I thought, you know, war is such a uh, such a potent representation of the creation of karma, the resolution of karma, the absolute you know craziness of it all. And so forth. Um, so thank you. By the way, those are three outstanding and accurate interpretations of what I why we chose you know, Mikey and me chose gray for this um, particular set because there's there's really there's so many things that go into this. Now even the um, let me just take a moment to to mention the essence twin. We are this is a this is a teaching that is really big on the whole concept of soulmate essence twin. <laughs> Everybody wants to know their essence twin for God knows how many reasons, right? Until they have a relationship with them, uh, eighty percent of the time, and then they want to run like hell, um, you know. So in any case, what um, I tried to depict in the essence twin card was more than just literally your essence twin yeah. it is like these two swans notice they're not identical you know they're not perfectly the same mm -hmm. but they assume a posture and a way of being with each other that's really compliment complementary and then the the most freudian literally and figuratively use of the cards that i did was that sigmund freud down there um with both in color and black and white. And he is, you know, you know his famous interpretation of dreams concept. Well, what it's suggesting mm -hmm. is that what, when you get it upside down, what is being mirrored back to you? And mm -hmm. um, and if it since this in the negative pole, it might be something that you are avoiding or not looking for. It doesn't mean that it's a negative characteristic, mind you, but it might be something that is a mirror that you're not paying attention to. And then, of course, um, Maya, I reinterpreted because, folks, if we're living in Maya, guess what? The positive pole of Maya then is manifestation. What if we what if we took that so-called illusion, that veil, and since we're living in it and we used it to make something happen for us? And there we have it. So, all right. So what I want you to, uh, to do now, it's, it's six o'clock. We've been here an hour. And even though I've got more slides, I'm going to go through these uh, spreads just quickly. We're going to just read this. And then we're going to have you guys uh, group up. And um, or actually, I'm going to pr present some um, uh, of these um, layouts. <laughs> and you're going to read them. You guys are going to give me input on them and tell me your interpretation. Um, so. These are the original spreads that I had, uh, that I have both in the booklet and uh, on the website. The Michael Motivational Moment, as you can see, is one card, and it's like a thought for the day. It's a meditation. The yin-yang spread, the duality spread, is two cards, and it's a do or do not, an action kind of a, of a choice. The synthesis spread says, okay, so if I if I do something or looking at the situation, tell me the benefits, you know, the drawbacks, and you know what it would, you know, come out to in the end. So positive, negative, neutral. Time trajectory spread is literally probably the oldest spread in all of divination, isn't it? You know, it's it's a card about the past, the you know, how it led to the future, excuse me, how it led to the present, and then where, you know, where it's going in the future. The relationship spread, you and other, um, uh, the issue um, and or the connection. So the um, the other, by the way, doesn't have to be a person. The other can literally be um, a thing, a job that you're applying for, or you know your pet that you're <clears throat> looking at to find out about, or something of that nature. It, that other can be any other thing. <clears throat> so. 
collaboration spread, it's for project interaction, karma action spread. If you're feeling something intense with the human being, karma and action spread is a little bit of a tricky one because it's only four cards, which means mm -hmm. it doesn't give you a, a real resolution. It gives you more of a description. Um, uh, probably my favorite and the most interesting for a lot of people is the future oracle spread. And that's what most of you go to Michael for anyway, right? <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> okay. Um, the, two, the three big ones um, is the overleaf spread, which is literally a situational overleaf profile. <clears throat> and I'm very proud of my friend Victor for this one. Because guess what, folks? If you were to go to do this, he programmed each of the placements so that the roll place, the roll card space, only has rolls drop into it. Cool. Uh, goals only have goals drop into it. Attitudes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you literally get a complete profile. Uh, situ and I emphasize situational profile because I, I wouldn't mean to tell you that this is going to give you your exact overlays. Even though I've, I've been astounded to hear some people say, oh, my God, I've, I had four or five or six of my own overleaves in it. Probably the one that I'm most proud of <clears throat> and mm -hmm. the one that I think has the, uh, I'm sorry, who said something? Oh, okay. Is the family imprint spread. And for those of you who know the work of Bert Hellinger uh, and his family constellation therapy, it is literally a spread that is designed to operate like that. So if you're having issue with, you'll, you'll notice that the placeholders in that spread, you know, are like parents, um, siblings, um, you know, other key players, et cetera. And then, you know, Revelation is the largest spread, uh, like they have the Grand Cross in traditional tarot. Uh, Patricia, I know, and, um, and I think Dawn and a couple of other of you who are uh, traditional tarot users probably know that one. Usually that's anywhere from 10 to 12 cards. So. Okay, um, so would you all like to take a five minute break before we come back and um, you we start uh, doing some uh, readings of these that are on the screen? Or do you want to take a, yeah, go ahead. No, it sounds good. Yep, okay, take a break. all right, so let's see. We are at, I show 611, so let's be back here by 616. All right, same bat time, same bat channel. All right, in the meantime, I'm gonna leave this up and this is a, a yin yang duality spread. Go ahead, have some fun. See if you recognize anything or see if what pops out for you.
All right. One minute countdown. See if people come racing back with toilet paper on their shoes. <laughs> it's a Zoom. You'll never know. Ah, that's true. That's true. Well, it was a funny visual, I thought. Okay. Anybody else read 616 yet? Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Okay. Is that popcorn, Jean? It is. It's this um, Himalayan gold. It's like a vegan popcorn, which is made, it's made with butter flavored coconut oil. <laughs> wow. Wow. Himalayan gold. Sounds like a, one of the names of some of the old pots we used to smoke. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to baby boomers to take uh, take and change the names around. Exactly. I, think it, I think it is a pot that we used to smoke. Uh-huh. Okay. All right, gang. So we're back. So for those of you who are here, um, I, I, granted, I did not ask a particular question. So I'm throwing you in a little wet, but um, you, we now know that this is a simple, you know, kind of a yes or no, um, do or don't sort of a question. And the young side, uh, the do it side is a goal card acceptance. And it's in the contracted pole of ingratiation. So that's the energy that's reading if we did something. Now on the yin side, we're seeing that it's a body type card, Mars. And we're seeing that it's in the illuminated pole or the upright pole of endurance. And this is the thing that says, don't do it. So tell me your impressions, folks. Feel free to chime in. Abby looks like Yoda. <laughs> I have, I have a sense of it. <coughs> Patricia, please. Yeah. Um, so whatever it is, the, the duality, whether you're doing it or not, um, it's like, do it, but don't become a people pleaser. And the other side is, uh, don't do it unless you're prepared to put in a lot of time and energy. Great. So that's an interesting interpretation. Really good. Good. Anybody else? Thank you for that, Patricia. That's wonderful as a good starting place. Thank you. Because remember, there's no right answer here. Oh, I'm sorry, Catherine. Go ahead. Okay, I was just going to say, um, from the don't do it, you may be facing a lot longer or more difficult journey than if you do do it. So if you do do it, you might want to look at your reasons for doing it. Is it something that you feel obligated to do or something that you want to do for yourself? Um, except what your sorry. growth, what your position is going to be. but. Um, you may find that if you don't do it, it's going to be just as much a challenge. Okay. Okay, good, good. See, notice, folks, the wonderful narratives that come up, you know, out of your uh, understanding of the overleaves, but just even seeing the cards. Okay, great. Just out of curiosity, Catherine, uh, if it were you, which one would you, would you, uh, would this be a do or a don't do? It would be a do for me. Okay, great. Thank you. Patricia, I don't think I asked you. Would it be a do or don't do for you? I'm always in there for the long haul. So, um, yeah, I'd do it. Okay, great. Good. All right, who's next then? Who who else wants to take a stab at this one? Okay, James. Oh, 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 the one yeah. thing that, that strikes me is that the do it is in the negative pole. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives me pause. Um, and then the don't do it is in the positive pole, but it, it's endurance. So it'll, it'll be, it'll take some oomph to do it. So, um, yeah, I don't know. So, that's all right. This is good. This is the kind of thing that I'm wanting you guys to have. Okay. Excellent. We're going to leave those three and we're going to go on to, we're going to. All right. I, 
I'll stop raising my hand. No, that's all right, Dennis. I'm sorry about that, uh, Tony. I want to make sure I get a whole lot of different ones in. So, Tony, will give you a shot at this one first. How's that? Okay. All right. So this is a collaboration spread. This is this is what's asking. Okay, if me and another person are going to work together, hmm. what's the outcome going to look like? Hmm. So when I look at it, what I see is that if you are coming from a place, going back to this other card of ingratiation, um, if you are looking at this connection with whatever it is, person, place, thing, something that you are connected with, um, and it's not kind of going the way you want it to. But if you come from the negative pole, of essence, if you spin it the other way, something interesting happens because you're now dealing with it energetically versus it being what you're expecting of this other who is in a state of, let's say, I'm going to hold back on this. Okay. If you can look at it. <clears throat> from by flipping the card of yourself, experience their restraint as something that is not um, not a negative affirmation of what you're experiencing with their energy, that you can complete whatever it is you want to do in this collaboration. So that's a heck of a heck of a narrative, Tony, for sure. And I really appreciate that. It'd be interesting to to, to see um, doing this for someone to see what you, you know, and by the way, remember folks, she, Tony implied that she could spin the first card, which by the way, you can, you can make an affirmative statement, you know, but I advise you to start off with the card and the pole, just as it is. Take, remember this, this tell, this detects for us, detects, and it's giving feedback to us about the now not what it could be or should be necessarily. But let me ask you, Tony, one final thing. When you look at this, these three cards, um, uh, would you say this is a uh, potentially positive or a do it kind of a uh, uh, collaboration or don't do it? I would, it would be something that I would think very carefully about. Okay, so good. Who's next then? Who's, who, who wants to take a stab at this? Janaya's got her hand up. Janaya, go ahead. Go for it. I have another side question. So I will wait oh. until until there's a time to ask a side question. Okay. Carry yeah. on here. Good. Carry here. Yeah. I can, I can do it. Okay, yeah. Phil, go for it. So I'm going to take a rather uh, really straightforward approach. All right. The, the Myself, number one card, the mirror, what energy am I looking at that's mirroring um, that I can take advantage of? And perhaps that's the other who's using restraint and in, in, uh, working out the project. Yeah. Incredible and balance and control. Is so it's a good outcome. Yeah. So you would you say you would do this um, collaboration then? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you, Phil. Great interpretation. Who's next? Now we have Abby. Abby, go ahead. So I find this really interesting because the collaboration spread brings up the Essence Twin cycling off completion like card and both of them, both of them. And so I kind of see <laughs> the connection between the two people as essential to their evolution of their soul aid, the, their soul cycles. So when this person, whatever situation is, recognizing that the qualities of this other person are also a mirror of the qualities that are within yourself and noticing what this other person for where there's restraint within the relationship that's causing something to be taken action on or something to be completed, um, which will then, once that is completed um will help the the relationship kind of 
blossom off or or finish. Okay. So for you, would you would you do this collaboration? I think I would. I think I I, I do believe um that everyone is a mirror and I believe that um it's all <clears throat> that you guys get to work through together as a collaborative effort. Um, so I would, I think it's a positive thing. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. okay we're going to go on to, Oh, is there anyone Catherine. else? Catherine. Catherine. Okay. I'm fine. I, I'm just going to similar to what Phil said. It's a straightforward reading to me with the other being the important one that for the project out outcome to be successful, which it looks like it is restraint seems to be the value that would work here. And so I would mirror the restraint of the other person. The two of us working together with restraint would have a positive outcome. Excellent. So I would do it. Excellent. Good job. So let me put a couple of more spins on here for you to help you uh, understand how I might break this down. Remember that the, the, the Essence Twin card is one of our covenant cards. So one thing about this we know is that this is a deep connection um, that, uh, that I am coming from. And, and it, since it came up as mirror... It, sa it says, I'm looking outside of myself for some qualities. What's going to be shown back to me? And sure enough, look at this. It's a mode card. Remember that reservation is a mode, which means it's a behavioral style. It's an approach to get something done, isn't it? So we see it that you know in that way. And we also know we could even read a few more things in there. We can say it's about, it's about the server um, mode. <laughs> Um, so, you know, that this is a person who's probably got some helper energy in. And since it didn't come up in the negative pole, repression, it's not going to probably lock us up. It's going to help add discipline and strength and form to our getting this done. And then lo and behold, we're going to actually complete the sucker and we're going to be finished. See, to see, does everyone see how that works? And notice, by the way, it just so happens that the cycle off card is literally the end of the of, of a collaboration, isn't it? So mm -hmm. even that card falling in that spot is perfect. Does everyone get that? Yeah. Good, mm -hmm. good. Okay, Did now you, I'd love to hear- Janiah from, has another question. Janiah. Janiah. Okay. Actually, this yeah. time I really do have something back here is to say, uh, this is this is very uh, synchronous to have this particular spread in a curious way. I am working with uh, an individual about selling my- one of my uh, selling a parcel of land. I am in the other position. I am the energy of restraint. The uh -huh. other person is in the you position. We are we are quite close. I know there are karmic connections. It's you know, and there are close connections now. And this person is seriously in warrior action mode. And I'm the one. Pray, okay, one step. I need to be more sure. I need all the levels to align. And I do expect completion. Fortunately, that person has a, let's do a win, win, win. And so when <laughs> I give her a straight, I say, yeah, I'm with you on win, win, win. And I still need a little more time and homework. So this is just wonderful fun to have <laughs> this mirror Even better. in a different way. Even better. Wonderful. Yeah. So thank you. We'll let you know by the end. Of, I expect it will be done by before class ends. Okay. We'll <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you. All right. So we're going on to another spread here. So again, now this is a bit different. Okay. This is about a relationship, you know, and the state of it, right? This is a relationship spread. You're asking about a vibe or an, an issue between two persons. So who wants to take us? How about if we hear from Dawn or Paige or uh, Beth or um, hmm. Jan or somebody we haven't heard from much tonight at all? Um Terry, anyone uh, wanna wanna jump in here and give us a, give it a shot? And Jean, as soon as you see that hand fly up, um, go ahead Just and call. Just see, are you still in your old question, or can you take that? Oh, thank you. I don't see anyone else. Any any of the. <laughs> I know. I, I called all the. I called all the quiet kids. You know. I'm like, Sorry, I can't. Like, okay, find my, I'll just raise my hand this way. I couldn't find the, the clicker. Um, uh, it seems like this to me might seem like um, <clears throat> almost like you found your mentor. Um, if if well, or you might be the mentor 
because you have an elder, which sometimes is wise and it's fulfilling to teach as long, you know, if you're mentoring younger people, that's also very fulfilling. Um, then you have the other person potentially growing from that joint experience, um, which also I know a lot of old souls, you know, are sharing whatever they've learned in life for, you know, potentially passing it on to the next and then relationship. So um, that seems like a positive uh, future. So it's those. interesting, isn't it? But look at the card below it now. This is the Nexus card. This is this is the other end of the Tao set. And it's in the contracted position of distortion. So even though you've got two positive poles, it mean, it looks like this, this a relationship has some confusion going on or has something that's not quite clear, even though both players bring really good stuff to it. Does every, everyone see that? Maybe it's just a short term. It shouldn't be a long term forever relationship. Maybe it's just for one moment. Ah. But yeah, I can see the distortion part is the, yeah, it could be obligation or something like that. But next person. <laughs> <laughs> Paige, yeah. thank you for taking a stab at it, though. That was I awesome. don't know what Paige just suggested is that yeah. could this be a teacher student monad relationship where there's still a lot of distortion in the lessons and not lessons being learned properly yet, but there's going to be disruption. There's going to be growth. There's going to be forward movement. We're just, it, it's still in flux. Wow. It's I like access. it. It's changing. I like it. That's a great interpretation. Now, let me use this by Catherine's example. Um, uh, that uh, Because she knows the Michael teachings well, she could bring in that extra layer of, of um of discernment and <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> and nuanced description because what came to her mind was like oh this looks like a teacher student monad because you know for michael students we know that old souls like to be in teacher student monads like Paige said um and the other person seems receptive to it because it's in the positive pole of growth which is a very would would indicate a very open and and uh, uh, and receptive, but the relationship itself is the nexus. And what we know of the nexus is that there are really three major kinds of nexus. There's a, a, a contraction nexus where there's a divergence. There is an expansion nexus where there could be a combination of things, and then there's an erasure nexus that might get rid of a whole lot of options. <clears throat> Now, it's having that extra little bit of Michael knowledge that can make inform your readings really de a lot more deeply, you know, for those of you who have that. So that's excellent. I really appreciate it. Would anyone else like to take a stab yeah, at this? Next one is Beth. And Beth. Then come on. All right. Come on in, Beth. Thanks for taking um, I was just going to add that um, <clears throat> the way I'm reading it is that <clears throat> you have a, a very dynamic collaborative, helpful relationship here, but then you have a distortion event or an, uh, something going on in the environment that is creating uh, a distortion. Um, and so it's not necessarily the relationship that's distorted, but it's a dynamic at play. Uh-huh. Excellent. And um, so the dynamic um, is separate from the relationship. And then because the first two cards are in their positive pole, my sense is they'll use it as an opportunity um, as opposed to something else. Wonderful. Excellent exploration. By the way, now, if you were with someone, and, you, and they were looking at this, you could ask them that question. Is there something in the environment that causes the two of you sometimes to miss each other and not quite get what the other one is trying to do? Something like that. You can ask it in the form of a question and then see what pops out. Because remember, we're trying to help initiate or create the circumstances for a conversation. Excellent interpretations though, all of you, great. Next is Dawn. Okay. Dawn, did you want to take this one or would you like to jump on to the next one? 
As long as we're here. <laughs> All right, as long as we're here, Don. It takes me a couple of minutes. I got to study them and think about it for a minute. All right. Okay. Go right um, ahead. To me, this looks like a really clear example of two people going into something for the right reasons, but with the wrong person. This, it just seems to me like it's really simple. And it's saying, this isn't the person to be doing this task with. Uh-huh. Well, okay. okay. Well, See, I liked everybody else's better. <laughs> no, that's no, that's good. Uh, that that would have been an interesting when you said do this task with. I was just noting that this is a relationship spread, and the major difference is is the relationship spread is in a way asking about compatibility for you know the nature of the two people as opposed to the compatibility of them producing an outcome just to make a distinction between the two. But that, if this okay. were, if this then were- I would say wrong person. <laughs> still wrong person. No, that's okay. That's good. That's good. Thank you. No, your your reasoning is sound in the way you interpret them. Uh, it's just when you use, you know, the ta the word task is, is why I just wanted to clarify. Well, you know, I'm a warrior. Everything's a task. You know what I mean? There's <laughs> yeah. the marriage task. You know what I mean? Et cetera, et cetera. I see. I see. Every, everything is a task. And uh, so, all right. All right, I'm going to move on to the next one here. Beth, did you have another question or did you, you just need to take your thing down? Okay, great. No, you, no more questions. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to go on to the next one here. And I jumped over a couple of the four cards mm. to go to something that's a little bit more in depth. Mm. Um, and this, of course, is the you know, future oracle spread. Now, granted, again, we are looking at something that doesn't have, you know, a direct or a specific question. Mm -hmm. But notice that the top, I have the numbers of the cards mm -hmm. and I have the, the position that each of those cards occupies. Okay, so the first one is the inception of where this situation is at. Okay, this is the, the starting point. Then what's present in the moment? Then where's the ego block? Okay. Then what risk do you have to take? And then what's the outcome possibly going to be in, you know, whatever you've asked the question about. So does anyone want to take a stab at this? Obviously the more cards, the more you are creating, you know, some complex narratives, aren't you? Because you're dealing with not only the name of the, you know, the card itself, and the pole it's in, but now you're looking at the position. And the positions aren't quite as, you know, uh, simple or straightforward as yes or no and you and other. It's more descriptive, isn't it? It looks like uh, Abby has her hand up. Abby, go for it then. So I, I like to highlight certain things that kind of relate um for the inception card the it's, it, it seems like there's something that you're good at there's some sort of you know skill that you have down pat and what's present being manifestation is maybe you're really good at creating your reality maybe you're really good at creating you know your future oh, and what's blocking you is trying to see and figure out the surveillance trying to figure out how it's going to play out how this is going to you overthink it good right you're overthinking Great. it and so blocking you and so your risk uh, your risk that you got to take connectedness is knowing that you're already competent in creating your manifestation you have to just settle into this being this sense of being connected with one connect connected with your future self connected with you at the moment of having this manifestation and then recognizing that the outcome is going to be a practical, you know, solution for you. If you can connect with this future version of yourself, knowing that you are one, then your manifestation will become true. Wow, that's fabulous. Excellent. Oh, <laughs> Abby, that's wonderful. Yeah, I could, I, you know, and by the way, folks, as I said, this is one of the most popular spreads. Um it doesn't take a lot of cards, but look at the incredibly yeah. intricate and interesting kind of narratives that you can build off of these things. 
Um, fabulous. Anyone else want to take a crack at this? Yeah, next is Alexandra. Alexandra, go for it. Or you could go really simple. This looks like someone wants to start up an internet situation. <laughs> oh, that is excellent. If what the heck, if that were the question, could you imagine getting something like that? That would be perfect, wouldn't it? Yep. <laughs> Excuse me. Is that Manifest, your... Manifest... And then your next one is Terry? Terry, go ahead, Terry. Are you there, Terry? Okay, I, I unmuted myself. Oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> what I saw, you know, we're storytellers, we are. Since... <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I saw a story being told, and I saw a young, competent soul. <laughs> Absolutely. That still has a lot of Maya going on, <clears throat> but it really understands the laws of manifestation. But they're in the third internal monad, and so they're kind of in the negative pole of observation. They're they're not totally sure of themselves, and so they're, you know, really having to look around. But they're they're young and audacious enough <laughs> to give it a go, <laughs> and actually, it's going to turn out that you know they're going to learn a lot, a lot of practical lessons. Um, in pursuing their 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 path, they're going to grow. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. So that's that my artisan story for the. That class. is a great <laughs> narrative, and you triggered me to also add something. How many of you actually looked at the picture in the positive pole of the pragmatist? Can't see it very well because oh, you can't? It's, okay. it's behind the the video. Um, oh, it is. Boxes. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can get it out of there. What it is, is it's a picture of an of a um, computer key that says alternate option. <laughs> Alt option. I love it. <laughs> and, you know, for the pragmatist, the positive pole pragmatist, isn't that what they're always trying to do? Come up with a different angle that will work possibly easier Right. You know, something else. So right. the, another interpretation on the end might be, you know, the practicality might be you're going to generate a number of different options to look at. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Excellent. Because That's they're great. looking around. But yeah. I'm still convinced it's a young soul. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Exactly. A young soul who's still kind of hiding, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah or doesn't good. doesn't really realize that, you know that they're dealing with a lot of Maya here on the physical plane. Right. <laughs> so they're you gotta come forward, out but their manifestation it. come hell or high water, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the negative pull of observation, I I consider it, you know, the voyeur or the peeping Tom. Oh, interesting. Uh -huh. um, it's the person who's holding back and hiding, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> not wanting to be seen, but wanting to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. That's great, you guys. This is wonderful. All right, that I'm gonna... was fun. That was a fun one. <laughs> oh, good. Anybody else on this one? Then yeah, I'll, I'll the wait. Next one is Beth. Okay, Beth, go for it. Um, oh. Yeah, you're Steve. You're speaking to sort of how I'm reading it. I uh, also like everybody. I see. So here is a person who's competent and can uh, effectively put things together. They're good at manifesting what they want to manifest there. Um, but I see number three is their fear rising to the surface. So they're hanging back, maybe in surveillance mode. It looks more like judgment instead of practical participation mm -hmm. from fear. <clears throat> Yet to get out of that, they just need to take it step by step in a practical way for connectedness um, and keep it practical for outcome, just to be really pragmatic about everything. Excellent, excellent, excellent gang. How are you guys all feeling about this, this process? Do you see how many legitimate narratives can come out from your individual unique point of views and none of them be wrong, but rather they are providing, you know, whoever this reading was gonna be for a slant, um, you know, an interpretation that they could garner something from 
because you brought yourself to it. And you acted as the, allowed them to be the interpreter. But as I said to Beth last time on her interpretation, which was also great, is you can take these and you can say to a person, so what do you see in these cards? And you can help coax them. And if they hit a block, you can say, well, in, in this teaching, this particular card or this particular concept means this. Does that ring a bell for you at all? You guys following me? In other words, you're situationally prompting them with little bits of pieces of information along the way, but also asking them because, you know, a lot of folks, uh, even if they don't know the Michael teaching, will get charges out of these cards. Like, for instance, in this card, the, the image that for me is the most charged is happens to be in the negative pole of observation. That is the most charged for me personally. And I would wager that a number of people have a bit of a, and in case you're wondering, it's a pe you know, it's a person peeping through an old keyhole. And um, when we see these kind of images, remember I said that these cards were also a Rorschach, you know, a Rorschach, you know, feedback test. In other words, to a person uh, specifically, it may not, they may not know about the negative pole of observation being surveillance within the Michael teaching. But man, they may have been, you know, as a kid, maybe somebody watched them. Or even right now, they hate the fact that their neighbor has a 24-7, you know, drone out, out in the front of their house or something like that. They'll have their own reaction, trust me. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, Janaya, did you have something or did you take it off? You're, you're, you need to unmute yourself. I have a, I have a, I have a, this, this is, this Go ahead. is. This Go is ahead, a, fun, a fun spread for a, a young friend of mine, right? This is a young soul with great dreams of being glorious and a, a celebrity and high status. And, you know, that's what success <laughs> looks like, right? But there, but, and that's partly illusion negative, partly manifestation positive, trying it out both, both ways, right? Good, good. In that observational mode in the with the eagle block, with the fear of wanting to be seen and not wanting to be seen. And and so with these grandiose ideas, what the risk is is can I be ordinary and still consider that a success in my adolescent young soul terms? Wow. Can I offer something to can I offer something to the common folk? You know, can my website or my show or my dance be cool for ordinary folk too um and i can still and it will be humbling it may be humbling because it's going to just be practical not flashy wow that's fabulous and how and notice ladies and gentlemen janiah had an actual person and a situation in other words a question that she essentially asked for you know has for that person and this spread fit it perfectly that's awesome, Janiya. By the it way, was great. Yes, did go ahead. you did you want to ask your 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 uh, question? Yes, my, my side question is this, um, Steve. I followed along the spreads that you gave us in the long list. I yes. followed along in my book, and there are about four of them, roughly, that aren't listed here. Do you have them listed in the place we can get to? Yes, because there's a couple on, new ones. They are on the website, and they will be um, in the uh, uh, motivations ebook guide. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So the the real long ones, obviously, were you know were just too uh, too long to to put in this little book. Um, so yeah, good good question though. Thank you. All right, let's see what else did I do. Okay, just as just as a reminder, you know, um, uh, remember the more that you can separate into the the centers, you know, um, the your emotions, your thoughts, your sensations, your strategies, your reactions or reflexes you help a person zoom in on what part of their nature is getting triggered. And that in itself is literally great grist for the mill. Because we know that in the process of, of, of self-realization is the process of soul aging. And the way to help ourselves you know, uh, have self-realization is to literally help break our reactions down into parts. The more we're capable of doing that, the more that we're going to have mastery or figure out how to have mastery over these things. So um, I just want to say this last thing about love and fear. 
Um, you know, in the, in this, in, Michael was, it, it's very well elaborate. There's two pages of discussion of, of love and fear uh, in the uh, ebook uh, for each one. And one of the things that I want you to know is love is not virtuous, nor is it victorious, just true. So when you see a positive pole, know that what's happening is this is an authentic label, but it doesn't mean any, anything's better than or less than, and it doesn't mean you're going to win. It just means that, you know, it's true for you or about that person that you're asking about. And then as far as the shadow or the negative pole, it's that whole prime. For those of you who took classes from me before, you know, on the physical plane, fight, flight, or freeze are our physiological responses to fear. And sometimes they save our life. So don't knock fear just for fear's sake, especially if some of the discussions may actually be saying, get the hell out of there now. You know, fear is your friend there, right? But what what Michael has said and my and I've said in my courses is is that primary and secondary reaction we have. If you have a fear reaction, be very careful that you don't make up a secondary reaction to go into fear of it. Oh my God, I'm afraid. No, it's like, oh, I'm being warned. Something's going on. If you can bring that level of consciousness to it and not fear, fear itself, and then help your clients to see that fear on the physical plane can be a very useful tool at least show you where contraction is, then you can make a lot more of it than just be paranoid about it. Okay? All right. So that's love and fear. And next week, we'll talk a little bit about more about what love and fear is. But for the last couple of minutes, and we do have a couple of minutes, um, I want to open it up to questions, and then I want to show you my new toy. So, any questions so far? All right. Well, boy, am I that good. All right. So, here's my, two, my new toy, gang. And the new toy is, if it lights up, and it should come on now. There we go. So I got a secondary camera because we're going to play and actually do something that you guys would actually do live doing a reading for someone. So when you look at this, these three cards, I laid these out earlier. Um, up here is our, our, um, how I laid them out. So in other words, they all came out negative poles. So how many of you freaked when you saw that? <laughs> okay. So let's let's do an eval on this. And then I want to show you about how to change the energy in a, in a reading, okay? So the first eval is, God, I'm sorry about that glare. My apologies. Um, see if I can get rid of some of that. I got we one got of the- your foot there too. So. <laughs> Pardon me? We have your foot there too. So that's- You can see my foot? Yeah. Oh, you can. <laughs> how hilarious. Okay, well, I'm going to hide it. It's it's a size 16, <laughs> so it's hard to hide. All right, all right. So fragile monotony and identification. Let's and we can assume this is any one. Let's call this the relationship spread. All right. So starting from fragile, that's you, that's you or me. Then the second one is you know the other. That's monotony, and the relationship is identification. Now we know identification means that you know we're 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 reading into a lot about another person into the relationship from our own projections, right? But what it's saying about me is, you know, I'm a couple of cracked eggs here. I'm really fragile. I'm real. I'm probably even pretty scrambled, right? So you know, um, me in this relationship isn't probably pretty stable. Well, and then you come over to the other. And this other, when we think of monotony and pers you know perseverance, what are they doing? Somebody just bark out a couple of interpretations for the negative pole of perseverance, monotony. Sticking to it because they said they would. Just sticking to it because they said they would. Do you think they might be bored doing Stop. the same old thing repetitively in this relationship? Yeah, bored is what came to me first. 
Okay, good. Or they're just, or they're just stuck in their programming. Oh, they're yep. stuck in their programming. Okay, good, good. All right, and then the last card, identification. Now, notice there's two people. There's two people in that picture, isn't there? Okay, now it's pre perhaps presumptuous to be that it's a man and a woman in that picture. But um, if we have identified, you know, with a, you know, a, a way of showing up, you know, that could be the persona we're displaying. And given the fact that this whole reading is in the negative poles, it would suggest we're pretty, you know, we're pretty collapsed. We're pretty much in ego. We're pretty much in contraction. We're pretty much internal projecting outward. When you see all negative poles, that was what, what it would indicate. Now, as a closing bit tonight, this is what I wanted to show you. What if somebody got this and you said, well, would you like to change the energy intentionally of this relationship? And they look at you and go, well, yeah, sure. Well, then what you do is you go over to the cards and you flip them 180 degrees. Now, somebody take a stab at that, the meaning of that reading. If you are effusive about your feelings and show them, and the other person is willing to persist in the relationship, you will both discover passion and self-actualization. Wow. Wow. Thumbs up, Alexandra. Nicely done. <laughs> now, let me ask you a general question to all of you. Does the tone of this three card, since we turn it upside down, completely change the vibrational tone of this reading? Yes, very much. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So know that when you're working with these cards and you're working with yourself or a client, you can turn these readings into an intentional declaration. And you can turn it into an intentional declaration by taking what's there and flipping them into, into the different poles. And if there was anything that was, you know, um, you know, unclear to you or anything about anything that's in there and you were uncertain, you can always come out and you can always pick another card and just lay it over your reading. And look at what it comes up as. It's the self card. So I would take that as a huge affirmation myself. And that's if I felt that these three cards weren't somehow clear in their own right. <coughs> Excuse me. I might pick a fourth. And, um, and then lay that fourth, you know, with the reading. Now I'm going to move it here just momentarily that you can obviously now you can't see it over the you know because the camera doesn't see that far but anyway does everyone get what i've done there does so everyone... steve i have a question are you you're putting it on the entire reading not just yes. on the yes okay. i would be you know i mean symbolically i could say like that but since it you know came up in you know, and by the way as a point of self understanding you could take this um and I laid it sideways. And by the way, sideways in my design of the cards, I call this the neutrality position, which means when something, when I lay something sideways, it can be either or. And it's you're being invited to look at it from either standpoint. Does this really, you know, work for my my greater self, or is this literally feeding? My ego, which is notice, and by the way, let's look at that picture even more clearly now, if you can, maybe I'll do this, is it's that, it's that broken face. Can you guys see it? Staring no. at itself. You can't. Well. Okay. I'll, try, well. I'll try it again. Yeah, that's right. good. Yeah. Sorry that's about better. that. I know the. I'm still experimenting with this camera and the light fixture on it. So, okay, that's a little better. I'm wondering whether the sideways card could also be not either or, but a both and an invitation for some in which two apparently contradictory um, 
mo mo uh, qualities um, can both exist. Absolutely. And since it's assimilation, this is assimilation mode. It's like, how do I integrate the two of them? Absolutely. Excellent. Mm. Excellent, Janine. We Very have good. a question from Terry too. Terry, Terry, where where's Terry? Hi. <laughs> Come on in, Terry. Uh, <clears throat> hi, everybody. So um, <clears throat> I just had a comment about this whole idea of positive and negative, right? You know, the, uh, up, upright. The way I always read um, cards that are reversed is that the negative pole is, is not yet conscious. Okay, ah. it's in the subconscious, right? Wonderful. And so, you know, when you see the negative pole come up, oh, this is something I'm not aware of. This is something I can become aware of. And then you can turn the card around, you know, by by becoming aware of the situation that it's showing you, right, in the negative pole. That so, is excellent, Terry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've always felt like, yeah, because it's so easy to get into the whole thing of judging, you know, negative is bad and positive is good and all that crap. And basically, you know, for me, whenever I have an, a reverse card, you know, that's how I look at it. I just say, oh, this is something I'm not aware of. And this is bringing it to my attention. And so that's really helpful. And then you can flip it, you know, wow. kind of what happened with my card from last week and this week. Right. It was in the ethereal. Last week I was working with the archangels <laughs> a lot that day. And so my... Uh, I was very ethereal <laughs> when I came in, but you today, were, I you just non-corporeal, huh? That's correct. And then today I came back in after lunch <laughs> and I'm very grounded <laughs> and in the radiant pole. So, you know, that that's just fun, you know, playing with these different, you know, polarities and, and seeing that, yeah, we can switch them, you know, we might not even be aware that we're doing it. But Thank once you we... for that input. That is a brilliant piece. Uh, and everybody, I hope you adopt that notion that the that the uh, shadow poles, contracted poles, negative poles could be something that's just in the subconscious and not it's yet just, conscious. You're just not conscious of it yet. And it's bringing it to your awareness, you know. And then that, you can have that. You know, you're not going to like, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Push it away, but you can actually take it in. Excellent. So as information, yeah. Love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, and Phil has his hand up, but he oh. sees also on the phone. Oh, okay, Phil, go oh, ahead. Sure. Yeah, I just, do you I'm see a benefit in, in 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 switching the, those cards that come up in a positive pole? You mean switching them to the negative pole? That would be a very interesting. Yeah. I, would, I would love to assign you all that, that right. as, a, as a task, try it, do a reading, see where it comes up, you know, it, it, or, or even select cards and definitively put them in the negative pole at the, at the beginning of your reading and then see what, what it feels like, you know, in that negative pole, see what it, what value you might get from it. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was, come on. There we go. Okay. Here we are. Um, see what value you get from it. Um, I don't, th I think it's a very worthwhile undertaking. I've only done it a couple of times um, and I really can't even tell you, you know, why I, why I have done it, but that's an excellent exercise. And I hope you all do it this week and then report your results back next week. So there you've got homework. Nanner, nanner, nanner. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let me switch mm -hmm. out of here and see all your lovely faces all front and center side by side and um just say that uh if, as far as i'm concerned gang we are complete for this evening does anyone have any final questions that they really or comments that they uh, need to ask or make to feel complete for tonight all right i don't see i just i just oh. want to say that i really appreciated the interactiveness today you know that made it a lot more interesting and engaging than you know listening no offense steve but oh don't worry you know, no, no lecture i mean i can go on and on i mean i can go on with lectures 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> and descriptions of everything. But I really liked the interactive approach and the participation of the group. I, and, I had, yeah, I had put up the clapping hands because I had the same sense of applause. Of, um, mm -hmm. I am learning a lot listening to everyone else's interpretations. It broadens, mm -hmm. yeah, broadens my whatever my my <clears throat> palette to work from. <laughs> To, to it thinking metaphorically. Makes, Thank you. It was. And it, it just was. makes it more fun. <laughs> yeah. And that works too. Yeah. So I my my intention is to have more of these and then also find ways of, of deploying you guys back into groups so that you're actually doing these. But for tonight and to some extent next week, we're going to be doing more of this kind of interactive. Because let me ask you this as a final question. Did you guys feel more confident? in your own answers mm -hmm. when you were hearing people give theirs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Because that was what I was hoping for, that you gain, you know, this kind of momentum with that. It, it also <laughs> broadened perspective. It broadened <laughs> our perspective on, you know, different ways that, to look at it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like your tool of shining the light down on some cards that you're pulling actively to. I think that's going to be interesting tool to use in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've just got to I got to get it so that the lighting is right on it. Obviously, there's a lot of glare, but uh, thank you, Paige. That was what exactly what I was hoping for, and so thank you for that feedback. It uh, tells me it worked. Okay, hey, Steve. Yes. Two two things. One, for lighting. Um, I used to be a lighting director. Um, so you shine the light up away uh -huh. from whatever you're want to point it at and put white on top of that. And That's it will reflect that. back in a very even way. Yeah, I bought one of those so halo lights. Like a white, like a white, like a white piece of paper or something. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, it's it's got a light around the lens. So I may have to take this back and exchange it for something else if they'll do that. Because oh. the, the the light is literally haloed around the camera. So uh, oh. I can't tilt the light away without tilting the camera away. Uh, gotcha. So that's the problem, at least. And my, my second part on this was, I thought you wanted us to pull a yin, a yang yin, uh, do it, don't do it set of cards So to a question. So I did that, but I don't understand it. Uh -huh. So if I hold up my cards. Yeah, okay. So, so you got, is, which one was first? Which is the... Okay. This is the do it. Okay. This Discovery. is the don't do it. The practicality. Okay. And I, this is the part I don't get. The childhood? Yeah. Um, the childhood scenery if I do it. Well, it, sound, it looks like the positive pull says everything. Yeah, and, and so does the picture. Look at the little girl with the bird. Yeah. She's discovering something that's really fun. Right. Returning to, to her. Returning to a, the, a child's mind. Right, a child's mind, um, being open and curious, and thereby having you know discoveries would be really motivational for me. <laughs> to, to, not doing to go it, for it. Just, not doing it to me would be an, one of those alt options. It's just another choice. So to me, even though they're both positive poles, and by the way, that's an assimilative card. So remember, assimilative cards are neutral. The, the, the practicality one. That's an assimilative card, which means it's neutral by design. So if it's neutral as opposed to discovery in childhood, which would you would you do it in the young or not do it? Mm. Yeah, for, for me, it would be I would go for the childhood discovery. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah. a no brainer. <laughs> for me, for me, it doesn't mean me. that for you that has to be correct. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So. Exactly. Interesting. I am right. also being, you know, be open, curious, look with awe, all these kind of things in that first card. Yeah. And okay, so, yeah, of course, that's my whole life. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, that might be a good place to start is the concept that um, it is the beginning of life on certain or the beginning of soul ages. So it's much more um, free. You know, it's much more clear and free and and um, innocent and um, going forward doesn't have as many pitfalls as they could have. Doesn't have as much baggage yet uh, uh, either, does it? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I also wondered if it was a childhood dream that you wanted to bring into reality into fruition. Was it something mm-hmm. that you've dreamt of all your yeah. life and wanted finally and this is your chance to do it. <laughs> I would add too if you decided not to do it, it being a neutral card and uh going with it just reads to me as it's just practical. It's okay. There's no judgment behind it. If you decide not to, it doesn't mean you're out anything. Right. Whatever's right. supposed to come to you will come to you anyway. Like there's no charge in not doing it. Mm-hmm. I like that. Excellent, folks. You guys, oh, you you are making this course what I hoped it would be. Thank you for being such bright people. And thank you for all loosening up and chiming in more tonight. Mm-hmm. I, I and I and I realize I I am trying to keep, needless to say, as you can tell now, this second night, there's a ton of layers and things in these cards. And mm-hmm. you can extrapolate out of that. And there's still more. And then I'm going to give you more time to extrapolate and, you know, do all that. So thank you for, you know, for being such excellent um, uh, contributors to this event. Oh, thank you, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Thank thanks, Steve. Steve. Yeah. Thank yeah. You, my Steve. pleasure. So but, of course. Yeah. But, what, I'm sorry. What was that? I said fun course. Oh, good. Yes. good. <laughs> stage is a swage. All yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, you guys. All right. Well, see you next week. Um, same mic time, same mic channel, as it were. Okay. Um, and um, good night, remember, everyone. Good night, that... Melanie S. <laughs> good to see yeah. you, sweetheart. <laughs> All right, everyone. Good night good now. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Oh, we can hear you, Jan. <laughs> good night, Jan, honey. <laughs> Yeah, we can't see her. That's she can't see her.